In this series I've been looking at the Brielle Altair 8800 replica kit. In this installment I'll look at some advanced topics showing how to install, configure, and run some larger applications as well as some software development tools under the CPM operating system. BASIC was the first high-level programming language offered on the Altair. Earlier in this series we looked at the 4K and 8K Microsoft versions of BASIC for the Altair. Under CPM, Microsoft continued to develop BASIC. With a disk-based storage and more memory, more sophisticated versions of BASIC were offered. A typical version was Microsoft's BASIC 80. Version 5.21 of BASIC 80, dated 28 July 81, is included on the Brielle Altair CD in the CPM3 disk image. It will also run on CPM version 2.2. A full manual for this version of BASIC can be found on the internet. This version is a very complete implementation of BASIC with such features as support for integer and double precision floating point variables, display of hex and octal numbers, and file input output with random access. It supports editing of previously entered program lines via the edit command and renumbering of program lines using the renum command. Here's a short basic program I wrote that dumps memory in hexadecimal, consisting of only about 15 lines of code. Many basic programs were written by and published for hobbyists, such as these contained in these well-known books by David All. The source for many of these games is included on the Brielle Altar 8800 CD. CPM came with an 8080 assembler and linker that allowed you to write programs in assembly language, assemble them, and run them. It also came with a debugger called DDT that was reasonably full featured. CPM3 came with a more sophisticated macro assembler. Let's look at a small example of assembling and running a program. I downloaded the source code for a simple 8080 Hello World type program. It's about 20 lines of 8080 assembler code. To get files like this into the CPM system, copy them to an SD card, and you can use the T utilities to copy them from the SD card to the CPM disk. You'll want to make sure that any assembler source files have DOS, that is, carriage return line feed line endings. If you edit them on a Linux system, that likely won't be the case, so you can get some mysterious syntax errors if you try to assemble it. We can assemble the source file like this. If successful, this produces a paper tape or Intel hex file. We can turn it into a CPM executable or COM file by running the linker. And now we can run the executable, which produces the hello message. There's also a program listing hello.prn that shows the source code with the machine code listing. If you want to debug your programs, you can do so with the DDT debugger. I won't cover the features of DDT other than showing a brief example. We can run DDT and load our hello program. And for example, the L command will disassemble it. CPM provided a text editor called Ed. 
By today's standards, it's incredibly crude and awkward to use, but by using ED and ASM, you can write applications in ADA the assembly language, and many applications were written in just this way. It was a major improvement over hand assembly and toggling in programs using the front panel switches. Higher level languages generally make it easier to develop software and are more portable. The C programming language was one of the early programming languages and is still popular today. In 1979, 20-year-old Lior Zolman wrote a C compiler for CPM he called BDS-C for Brain Damage Software. It was sold commercially and was used to develop a number of commercial applications. In 2002, Lior released the source code for the compiler into the public domain. Both source and binaries as well as documentation for BDSC are available on the internet. I'll give a brief demonstration here. Download and unzip the archive and copy these files to an SD card and then transfer them to a CPM drive. The file tail.c contains the source code for a small utility that displays the last lines of a file inspired by the tail command from Unix. It's a few dozen lines of source code. We can compile it as follows. and then link it to create an executable. And finally, we can run it, in this case using the source file itself as the file to display. Here's a small C program I wrote years ago that finds solutions to the N-Queen's chess problem. It only required a couple of small changes to port it to the BDSC compiler. It does take much longer to run on the Altair 8800 than on a modern x86 desktop. BDSC is only a subset of the full C programming language and it uses the syntax of the language as it was back in the 1970s, which predated the ANSI standard for C. Nevertheless, it was an amazing accomplishment for a 20-year-old with no prior experience writing compilers to develop a compiler that ran efficiently given resources of machines of this era. It sold over 75,000 copies. The most recent version of the so-called t Briel Altair utilities that transfer files between the SD card and CPM drives were written using BDSC. Now let's move from software development to some applications. WordStar was the dominant word processing application on CPM systems. It was written such that it could run on different systems and with different terminal types. You can find copies of it on the internet. I downloaded WordStar 3.0 from the site retroarchive.org. You need to download and unzip the file ws30.zip on a desktop system, then copy the files to a CPM system. Initially, you need to configure WordStar for the terminal type that it will run on. Unfortunately, the VT100 terminal that the Briel Altair emulates is not one of the standard types. For non-standard terminals, you need to patch WordStar with the appropriate terminal codes. Fortunately, someone on the Briel forums did this and documented the codes. The basic procedure is to run install.com and enter the codes. It's a little tedious, but once done, you have a version that works with the Briel Altair 8800. Here we launch WordStar and demonstrate some document editing.
It was a full word processor with features like mail merge, spell checking, and proportionally spaced page layout. It's not graphical, but as close to WYSIWYG as you can get on a character terminal. In document mode, it acts as a word processor and saves files in its own format. In non-document mode, it can be used as a text editor for standard text files, including source files. Let's edit an example of a non-document file. So I'll select N for open non-document file, and we'll type in a new file name. And we could start typing in text. While it's a little overkill for text editing, I haven't yet found a simple and easy to use text editor that runs on the Brielle Altair, so this can fit the bill for this purpose. One tip, put the terminal in word star arrow key mode by hitting Control shift alt f6 and then you can use arrow keys on the keyboard to move. So I'll now exit with control K and select Q to abandon file and we'll confirm and then X to exit WordStar full manuals for WordStar can be found on the internet WordStar was later ported to MS-DOS and Microsoft Windows. See Wikipedia for more information on the history of WordStar. SuperCalc was a spreadsheet application published by Sorsum in 1980 and originally bundled along with WordStar as part of the CPM software package included with the Osborne One portable computer. For those of you who have been around long enough to remember VisiCalc, SuperCalc came after it. SuperCalc had a similar user interface to VisiCalc but offered more features. By 1987, SuperCalc claimed to have 1 million users. I found a copy of SuperCalc version 1.12 on the internet on retroarchive.org. Like WordStar, you need to first run the install program and configure the terminal type. Fortunately, one of the choices is ANSI, which is compatible with the VT100 that the Brielle Altair uses. I also had to set the screen lines to 40 and columns to 80. When run, it complained that the help file sc.hlp was missing. I found that file as a separate download on the same web server. Let's fire it up and look at one of the example spreadsheets. Like VisiCalc, it uses commands prefixed with a slash, L for load. We'll load a spreadsheet example that comes with it for uh, example of break-even analysis. So this is an example where you can calculate for a given product given its retail price and some of the fixed costs where uh, how many units sold you would break even. So we can move the cursor around with the arrow keys. Let's say we have uh, development costs of 5000 marketing of 2000 
and then we have per unit costs of labor let's say a dollar and materials of three dollars and how about uh, fifty cents of packaging cost now for different retail prices let's see where we would break even so how about a retail price of five dollars So we're losing a lot of money with that. We're losing money in every unit. Let's try $10 per unit. Okay, $10 per unit, still at 3,100 units sold. We're losing money. Let's try $15 a unit. So at $15 retail price, looks like we would break even uh, somewhere around between 2,300 and 2,400 units sold. So this is something that would be difficult to use to do with a hand calculator and definitely easier with a computer. So we'll just quit now, slash Q. While it looks primitive when compared to today's graphical spreadsheets, you have to understand just how big a breakthrough this was over the previous pencil and paper, or maybe calculator or adding machine calculations were. Uh, VisiCalc on the Apple II was really the killer app that kick-started the success of Apple computers in the business world. While experimenting with programs on various CPM archive sites, I found a number of programs that did not work. The most common reason is that many applications require a Z80 processor and the Altair 8800 only emulates the 8080. Toward the latter part of the CPM era, most computers were using the more powerful Z80, which was mostly backward compatible with the 8080. The Brielle Altair was specifically designed to emulate the 8080 in order to run programs such as Altair Basic that did not run properly on a Z80. Programs that I tried that seemed to require a Z80 included the ZDE and VDE text editors, as well as Borland Turbo Pascal. The latter in particular is unfortunate, as Turbo Pascal was a very nice programming language and development environment. If you want to do more with the Brielle Altair 8800 system, I'll mention a few more areas you can explore. The Brielle CD comes with copies of the original documentation both for the original Altair 8800 as well as CPM. This can help you learn more and gain insight into how the hardware and software worked. The major components of the Brielle Altair 8800 include the AVR microcontroller that emulates an 8080 microprocessor, as well as the propeller CPU that handles video, keyboard, SD card, and communication with the AVR microcontroller. The source code for these is on the CD, so you can enhance or extend it if you want. The propeller in particular is quite an interesting CPU and the development tools for it are free. I hope this video has stimulated you into trying some new things with your Altair 8800 or at least given you some insight into some retro computing from the 1970s and 80s. I'll list here a couple of the major CPM archive sites that contain much useful software and documentation on CPM and related computers.